Hey, this is Twice Crispy, and you're watching Twice Crispy. Today I'm bringing you 30 tips on how to be a better killer. This video is geared for anyone that's relatively new to killer still, so let's say under 200 hours or so. So without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> Tip number one is picking an area of the map and sticking to it. Try to pick a section where the gens are close together, and you can protect the middle gen at all costs. The middle one's pretty important, especially for any killer that doesn't have teleportation or movement abilities. If you lose one of the outside gens, it's not a huge deal. You can always readjust your plan to make up for it. But if you lose the middle gen, it's going to be a bit more difficult to make up for that because you're going to have a lot more ground to cover. Tip number two, don't try to save every gen. This tip goes hand in hand with tip one because you want to continue to stick to the area you picked to start off. But when you see gens start popping in the other side of the map, it's super easy to want to rush over there. You know where the survivors are at, so you think they'll be easy downs, which yeah, probably will be, and that's fair. But the issue is, as soon as you leave the area you chose to guard, survivors are going to be over there working on those gens. So if you see a gen on the other side of the map that's still not finished and it's not near any of the gens in your area, just let it go. Tip three, break pallets right away. You definitely don't want to be chasing survivors around a pallet loop for ages waiting to get bloodlust. The best thing to do is just to break the pallet and force them to leave the loop. Even if the survivor leaves the loop as soon as they drop the pallet, it's still usually best to break it because that eliminates the chance of another survivor coming along later in the game and using that as a loop. There are some exceptions to this rule, but that's not something we're going to get into in this video in particular. Tip number four, reposition survivors. Don't let survivors be in control of the chase. Make sure you're doing all that you can to force survivors into open areas and dead zones and anywhere with lack of vaults or pallets. So you're thinking, well, how the hell am I supposed to do that? Well, that leads me to my next tip. Tip five, having good pathing practices. If you're chasing a survivor and you're following the same exact path the survivor took, you're doing this wrong. What you want to do is make the distance you have to travel shorter than the distance they're currently traveling. You can typically look ahead of where a survivor is going and realize that they're going to either a gym or a building or whatever the case may be. What you want to do is get to that spot before they do. So take a shortcut when it's possible. Tip six, use your power when it's going to count the most. This is a fairly killer specific tip because killers like Plague can use their power pretty much all the time, while killers like Huntress or Trickster have to go reload before they can use their power again once they're out of it. This could mean setting traps in the right spot as Trapper, or just making sure you can land a shot with a hatchet as Huntress. Just don't be out there wasting your power. Tip number seven, end chases quicker by using mind games at gyms, pallets, and shack. The most effective way to do this is to hide your red stain for as long as possible when you're coming around turns. What you want to do is walk backwards so you get to the corner of where you're trying to turn, and then swing your camera into the turn, not away from. Hopefully by this point the survivor is already running towards that corner, so you can get an easy face plant right into your weapon. Tip number 8. Look all around you while you're patrolling jets. This is a great way to find survivors that are hiding behind trees, trash tiles, pallets, or whatever else is on the map. If you're just looking in one direction, it's super easy to get focused on purely what's straight ahead of you, and you're not seeing that a survivor might be hiding 90 degrees to your left. Tip 9. Leave a chase if it's taking too long. Considering generators take 90 seconds as a base time to complete, taking 30 seconds or more for a chase might be a bit too long. Even though you really might want that down, it could be way more beneficial to you winning the game if you just abandoned the chase and went and looked for somebody else. Controversial tip number 10. Chase the easier survivors in the early game. What I don't mean to say here is to tunnel the baby survivors out of the game immediately. That's not super cool. What I do mean to say is that you should put those baby survivors on hook and draw out the more advanced survivors and then be able to damage them a little easier than if you just started a chase by itself with those advanced survivors. Tip 11, push survivors to the edges of the map. Most maps don't have a lot that the survivors can work with on the edges of maps, uh, aside from maybe Swamp and a couple other ones, but for the most part, the edges of maps are dead zones. Use the info you got from tip number four and five to get easy downs on the edges of maps. Tip 12, use boons to easily find survivors. Survivors are a fairly predictable bunch, and if there's a healing boon up, 
and someone's injured, you could almost guarantee they're going to go over there to heal. Well, don't you think that's a great way to know where a survivor is, especially an injured one? So next time you stumble across a circle of healing, instead of kicking it, just kind of monitor that boon when someone's injured, and you can probably just get the free hit on them because they'll be right there for you. Tip 13! Camping is almost always an enormous waste of time. The longer you camp and hang around the hook, the less pressure you're putting on people working on gens. If survivors know that you're camping, there's a good chance that they're going to leave that person on hook as long as possible so they can just bang out a few gens. So if one hook state takes 60 seconds, and you camp for that full two minutes till that person dies, that's three gens you just lost, assuming each other survivor's working on their own gen. Again, there's exceptions to the rule, but this doesn't help you become a better killer in any way. Tip number 14. Stop kicking gens instead of taking chases. Crispy, my man. I brought eruption and call of brine for a reason here. Every time you kick a gen instead of chasing the survivor, it gives them plenty of space to run. And that's just going to lead to chases taking longer and you getting slower downs. The better option here would be to kick the gen after you finish the chase. Down the survivor, maybe even hook them, and then go back for kicking the gen. Tip 15. Balance your perk loadouts. I've been in plenty of games where the killer brought four gen regression perks and barely got to use any of them because they couldn't find any survivor in the game. The more optimal thing to do here is balance your aura reading perks with your gen regression perks. And if you're feeling up to it, maybe even an endgame perk. 16. Use crows to find survivors. We all know spies from the shadow exist. Yeah, it's an alright perk, I guess, but you could just look around and see where crows take off and land. If you see a crow take off in the distance, the survivor is immediately there. If you see a crow land, that means the survivor's in the area because they just scared one off real recently. There's better perks to equip than Spies from the Shadows, so just use your eyes and look for crows when they take off and land. Tip 17. Commit to a chase when there's only one gen left. If you think that going around patrolling three gens is going to save you the game by kicking them constantly, you're dead wrong. Survivors are going to run away before you get to the gen, you're going to kick it, you're going to leave to go patrol the other two gens, and it's a super slow way to lose the game. The better thing to do here is just commit to a chase, find preferably a survivor that's not on death hook, put them on hook, and pressure the survivors instead of pressuring the gens. Tip number 18. Hook as far away from the gates as possible when all gens are completed. The further you are from a gate, the more time it gives you to intercept somebody that's either coming for a save or redown somebody that was unhooked from a recent hook on their way to a gate. Tip 19. It takes 10 grunt noises from a survivor until they wiggle free. This is a great indicator if you can make it to a hook or not. Wiggling free from a survivor takes 16 seconds, but who actually would count that in their head? Uh, everybody counts differently. One, two, three, four, uh, or is it one Mississippi, two Mississippi? How many, uh, how long between Mississippis is it? Okay, no more of that counting in your head crap. Just count the number of grunts, and by the time the survivor reaches nine grunts and you're not at a hook, drop them. Tip 20, use basement hooks to kill somebody when possible. If you down somebody right next to the basement and they're on death hook, good. Take them on down there, save the hook in case you need the one upstairs later on. You don't want to be stuck walking somebody towards a hook only to get there and realize, oh crap, I killed somebody on that earlier. 21, each killer has their own MMR. This isn't to say that you'll play against absolute babies every time you start playing a new killer, but you won't be playing against the same kind of survivors that you are in your more experienced killers. The game does have a general average for your killer MMR, and it'll place you with according groups. So if you're insanely good at specific killers, and you start a new killer, don't expect to play against the absolute newest survivors. They're going to put you against somebody a little more experienced. Tip number 22. Face a wall or any other object when picking up survivors. This applies even if you saw that nobody brought a flashlight into the trial from the loading screen. Nothing stopping any of them from digging a beamer out of a chest. It's also just a great habit to be in because as you get better as a killer, the survivors are going to get better with their beamer saves too. Tip 23. Don't pick up if you know other survivors are nearby. This isn't just to save yourself from beamer saves, but also body blocking attempts too. 
If you go hit a survivor that's trying to come in for a save or a body block attempt, it's super easy to scare them off just by hitting them once. You might even be able to get a down out of it if they're being greedy. Number 24, don't use Jolt on special attack killers. Jolt only triggers with a basic attack, so when you down somebody with Plague's Blood Puke, Blight's Lethal Rush, or Billy or Bubba's Chainsaw, you're not going to use Jolt. And if you do bring Jolt, the real question is, is it worth playing those killers just to use your M1? Tip 25. Always chase a new survivor right after you hook one. In an ideal game, you'd be chasing a survivor instantly as soon as you hooked one, leaving one person to come in for the unhook and heal, and only one other person on a gen while you chase that last survivor. This is a great way to keep applying pressure and make sure gen progress goes slow. Tip 26. Chasing in main building usually is not worth your trouble. A lot of maps usually have really survivor-sided main buildings. Look at Garden of Joy for an example. There's two infinites, one out the top window and back through the front door, and the other out the back window then around the side of the building where the god pallet is. Unless you're trying to get tier 3 bloodlust, nah, just don't waste your time. Tip 27, know what causes your killer to lose bloodlust. This is going to be different for each killer because they're all unique, but it's pretty safe to say that using your power will cause you to lose bloodlust. If you're unsure about what part of your killer's power would cause you to lose bloodlust, it's super easy to look it up on the DBD wiki. Tip 28. You can't lunge to get a grab. So if it's a pallet vault, a window vault, or even coming up behind somebody on a gen, if you want to grab them, make sure that you're pressed right up against a collision. Otherwise, you'll just hit them with an M1. Tip 29, you lose stacks of thanatophobia every time a survivor dies. This isn't a real upfront mechanic of the perk, but you might notice that as more people die in the games, gens might actually start popping faster. Not saying you should or shouldn't play this perk, it's just something you should be aware of. Tip 30, start slugging against three or four medkit squads. Even if you're only gonna get one hook state out of downing two people, it's way better to make them use their med kits to help get those people up out of being slugged instead of the heal later on in the game. I hope this video helps you become a better killer, and let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular you're struggling with, maybe I could help out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.